Hi there folks, uh, back again for another video. In this one, I thought I would have a look at some of the miniatures that I'm going to be using for uh, building the Raven Feast Warband and by extension looking to add to my Saga Warbands and stuff um, over the next little while. I talked about Raven Feast in the last video um, and I thought I'd just drop a little sort of additional video uh, this week where I looked at some of the miniatures I've been using. As you can see the sprues and also uh, some of the built figures and how they compare to some of the other miniatures out there, specifically some of those from Gripping Beast. So um, I'm going to be doing Anglo-Saxons and Normans, and I decided that the best route of action, route, well, the best course of action and the route was to go with the Vitrix stuff. So I thought I would break out a couple of the different sets from the skirmish packs uh, and just give you a look at how they are working so as you can see with the sets they come with miniatures that are effectively body and head and legs together more often than not or at least body and legs and then what you do is you just add the weapons and accessories onto them this one is the command frame of which i've taken some of the bodies out already which i'll show you those finished miniatures later um you get some really nice heavily armoured individuals as well as some slightly more unarmoured individuals as well, which I think is quite cool, um, for building your characters. They come with additional cloaks and capes and things like that, as you can see there. Uh, you've got a whole range of different weapons to choose from. You've got swords in scabbards. You've got loads of spears, as you probably would do during the period. You've got horns, axes. Elements to make a banner pole, a variety of different shields, so they come in different styles. So you can either have the teardrop shape or you can have the round one, depending on what you want. And as you can see, a few more bits and pieces there. Big Dane axes for your Huskals, more swords, a cross for building your uh, your monk. And then you can see a couple of head options there as well. So get right in close on that one. You've got unhelmeted and helmeted versions for you to make your leaders and a couple of additional ones there, as you can see. So that's the command sprue, and it makes miniatures that look like this. So this is one of the Huskals that I made using the kit. So, yeah, nice looking set. Obviously, you wouldn't necessarily glue the shields onto all of your miniatures but i think in this case it was fine the sword did snap when i was cutting it off the sprue because i was trying to clean it but otherwise it's okay and it took me a second to try and work out how to put the uh the um the <laughs> the cloak on I'm trying to find the words the cloak on but i think it's actually come together quite nicely i'll just get some better lighting so you can see the model a little bit better there but yes, that's the Huskal that I've been working on with Sword and Shield. It was also this chap with a Danax. So you had to stick his helmet on. Uh, but that again shows off the nice options for the cloak and the weapons. Still sturdy plastic kits in the in the round though, and you can do a lot of customization with them. I obviously stuck a sword onto his belt there as well, because he'd probably be carrying around one of them at the same time. I should say they don't come with these bases. So the Vitrix stuff doesn't come with these. Um, they just come with the puddles that they stand on, as you can see there. Um, but I just used some North Star plastic bases from the Stargrave and Frostgrave kits to give me my rounds for them to stand on. But yeah, so a Hushgal looking rather fruity. Uh, the other one that I made from the command sprue was this chap, who is my monk. Uh, I decided he would be uh, more like uh, the monks that I've seen in the last kingdom and stuff, so he's about to kick your ass as well as... Uh... So I like to think that he's saying, Hold, brother, I will deal with this scum, uh, as he gets his uh, club ready to hit someone over the back of the head. And a very nice detailed miniature as well, actually. Very nice. And it's good that it came on the sprue, so you've got an additional option for maybe an objective for you to secure in your games. Look after the monk, although he seems to be able to look after himself, I think. 
Uh, the second of the sprues is the warrior sprue. So this is the one that allows you to make unarmored and armored individuals to make up the rank and file of your force. So again, uh, two bodies there with the heads attached. So you have to have the, add the helmets, but then you've got four unarmored or at least, but one with, um, sort of a jerking over the top of his cloth. And then you've got a couple of additional armored fellows there in their chain mail or their mail, I suppose, uh, same sort of selection of weapons. So you've got your saxes there, uh, alongside swords and spears, Plenty of arms to go with your shields there on the other side. Same again, really. And then you have a collection of heads. So lots of additional heads there, as you can see, hopefully. You've got heads for making sort of raggedy old skirmishes and and, uh, and fjordsmen, as well as veteran fjordsmen if you're playing a game like... Uh, Raven Feast, you've got the bald head there, which I think is cool. Oh, sorry. And more helmets and heads on the other side. Looking pretty swish. As they show off all of those. So some really nice stuff on those sprues for the Anglo-Saxons, or the, uh, the Anglo-Danes, depending on which way you want to go with them, if you're using your games. Now, I will point out that there's a sort of there's no manual or whatever in the set but you do get this so this kind of gives you an idea of what you get um and what fits with what and then this kind of gives you a breakdown so that's for all of your warriors and what should go with what essentially and then this gives you a guide for building your characters you've still got plenty of options when it comes to this but it's just so you've got a breakdown of where pieces should go because sometimes it can be a little bit complicated looking at them uh, and not knowing what arms are meant to go with what. But yeah, so that's your Anglo-Saxons, or your Anglo-Danes Anglo, Anglo -Danes and late Saxons. Then we have the set for the Normans. So the Normans have the same thing. So again, this was the skirmish set. So this one was only 30 models, but it was about £28 for 30 models, which is pretty good. And there's the breakdown of how those work. So you've got the main frame and the command frame there as well. And similar to what you get with the Anglo-Saxons, you've got a command sprue here, which comes with various bodies that come more armoured than unarmoured, I would say, in this, say, this case. Uh, you've got those classic Norman shields that everybody knows. were well, very handy for fighting on horseback. Uh, as Mike Lodes pointed out in one of his videos way back in the day, because uh, it would protect you from arrow fire, which is quite nice. But then you've got loads of different options here. So you've got all the different helmets. Uh, you've got sheathed swords. You've got the arms for the shields there. Spears. Additional axes. Maces. Everything as well. Some more head options there too. Most of them wearing those helmets that everyone is aware of for them with the nose guards but you've also got that closed helm there too if you want to play with that and a whole host of additional accessories and things there for making them again you just use the guide on the back in order to work out what you want to make so that is a look at the command sprue and to give you an idea of the miniature that was clipped off that here's the character that i made so this is probably going to be my leader, I reckon, for my Norman force. I might stick a, I need to stick a scabbard probably with or a sheath without the uh, without the sword in it for him to use with the shield. But there you can see him sort of commanding his forces and charging forward, looking rather nice. I think you'd agree. They should up, up, should paint up very well, I reckon. You also have the warrior sprue here as well. So again, this comes with a whole host of armoured and unarmoured bodies for you to be using in your games. A huge array of shields, swords, axes, shield arms, helmets and stuff again for some of the models here. 
lots of potential for conversions and tinkering around with these because obviously it's plastic. And then you've got some amazing helmets on this sprue in particular. Um, hopefully we can get close in on those. Full closed helms. Just awesome. Really cool stuff if you're trying to make badass Norman warriors to try and conquer England with. Just remember, if you fall off the boat at the beginning, it's not necessarily a bad omen. William. <laughs> but yeah, gorgeous stuff there. I think you will agree. Um, for both of those. The other thing I wanted to do was do a little bit of a comparison as well. So I have some models here from Gripping Beast. Uh, so we've got the Ragnar Lothbrok there and the Harold Godwinson, although he might be a foot sore. I think he's a... No, he's Gripping Beast as well. I've also got these Berserkers as well from me Vikings from an older army. So I wanted to do a little bit of a comparison of scale for these. So let's go with Godwinson there against a Victrix plastic. So pretty good scale-wise if they were standing next to each other. Not a massive difference in them. So it essentially means that I can use some of my old characters and do some repainting on these. Get them looking ship shape in Bristol fashion because I want to add a bit more colour to my Saxons, I think, um, rather than just having them in red. But yeah, they actually measure up quite nicely, which is very good to see. Um, so it shouldn't look out of place when I'm using some of the mod the metal models alongside the plastics. But yeah, very nice models as well, anyway, from Gripping Beast. But the plastics from Victrix are just gorgeous. Let's see how they work against a regular more regular infantryman so again fairly similar in scale you wouldn't really know a difference between them i suppose um looking quite nice there we go so a good comparison there we also let's let's have uh, a ragnar against a uh, monk <laughs> so yeah again fairly similar obviously you want to be a slightly more heroic for the Vikings, I would suppose, and the hero characters. So they are slightly bigger, I guess, because of the rock and things. But otherwise, pretty similar looking in terms of scale. Obviously, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck on the conversion opportunities and the and the detail on the plastics nowadays compared to the older metal sculpts from Gripping Beast, but uh, still holding up. Probably take these off these bases, I think, when it comes to upgrading them. But yeah. So as you can see, lining up quite nicely with uh, everybody there on the tabletop. Nice to see. So yeah, uh, that was just a quick look at the different sprues that you can get from Victrix that I'm going to be using for uh, my uh, Ravenfeast Warband and beyond that going towards Saga and the Baron's War Conquest. Some very nice models and... Uh, well worth going to pick up. Uh, you can even get them in larger packs. I think it's about 40-ish quid for maybe double the amount of miniatures, which is absurd, and you'll never, ever have to buy any <laughs> um, Saxons or Normans ever again. Um, hopefully, in the future, I'll get to have a look at some of the crossbowmen and some of the uh, mounted troops, as well as some of the more specialist models, maybe the Huskars for the... Uh, for the Anglo-Saxons that I can use for making additional models to reinforce the warband with. But there we go. So yeah, a quick look at what's available from Victrix there, what I'm going to be using for my warbands, as well as a comparison and against and sort of looking at how they match up against some of the existing stuff there as well. Uh, I am going to be moving on to get ready for another video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. The link down below to my ko page, so if you found this info information handy, Make sure to go over there and drop me a little donation. But you do not have to. The most important thing is that you get stuck into the comments and have a chat. Uh, I love hearing what you folks have to say. So, have you bought the Victrix stuff? Do you like it? Do you have a preferred set? Do you like the Normans, the Saxons, or the Vikings? I would really like to get the Vikings later on, I think, because uh, I think it would be fun to play around with that kit and have a little bit of a tinker with some of the conversion opportunities between them and the uh, Anglo-Saxons. Uh, I really want to make a Tostig model. Uh, everybody should make a Tostig so you can have a cruel, annoying person to throw into battle and get beaten up. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, a fun look at what is available there from Victrix, and I'll be back soon with another video.
Bye for now.